bit of 486 21st of the 6th we're plowing through the year amen it's uh we're coming up to halfway newsletter today comes from psalm 3 and i've taken one verse to head it up but we've gone through the whole psalm in the newsletter the one verse i i've headed up with was and is I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill and I've titled the newsletter yes he actually hears but the devil doesn't want us to know that the devil doesn't want you to know that the Lord hears your prayers the the devil doesn't want you to know that Jesus uh, is not deaf. He don't want you to know that. He, he 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 doesn't want you to know that that Jesus, his arm is not short. He doesn't want you to know that. He 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 doesn't want you to know that that no matter how deep the dungeon, no matter how troubled you are, he can lift you up in that position right where you are and not necessarily take you out but lift you up on eagle's wings right there in the dungeon <laughs> hey, talk about dungeons and dragons oh look brother Thomas he's in China and he's been experiencing the dungeons and dragons over there in dragon city itself in China so it's a, it's a good prayer point to remember that Jesus hears and he he hears crystal clear he is not deaf he is not deaf and we go back to the writings of the prophet Samuel and as he as he wrote there about his own uh, mum Hannah how she um cried out to the Lord from her in the most part and the Lord heard Hannah and the Lord blessed Hannah didn't he didn't he bless her abundantly with a beautiful son and a a prophet a child prophet so the newsletter today tells us very clearly that um there is, there is more to Psalm 3 than meets the eye. As we look at Psalm 3, we think, well, this psalm may be for a troubled people, but if we dare to have a look at the powerful duplicity of this, this psalm, how beautiful this psalm is. You see, what I like about David, what I like about David um, whether he'd done it knowingly or not, I don't know, but um, he was always about exalting Jesus. He, he, everything he wrote virtually exalted the Lord, thy God, Yahweh, everything he wrote. Even though he might have been in trouble, we see clearly that he focused on the author and the finisher. The Lord shows me that clearly and that which is where I always see the duplicity in, and, and more and, you know the quadruplety and everything in, in what the Lord writes and here we see the, the omniscience and, and the omnipotence and the omnipresence uh, uh, of the Lord in this one psalm as, as David says very clearly if we just go in your Bibles to Psalm 3 and we'll refer to the newsletter if we just go to Psalm 3 we'll have a look there and you have a look at the way that this is penned and you'll be on eagle's wings by the time we're finished with it Lord how they have increased In verse 1 of Psalm 3, How they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me there is no help for him in God. And then from verse 3 all the way to verse 8 is the exaltation for the Lord. 
But you, O oh Lord, are a shield. This is not, oh, well, could you be my shield? You are. He, he, he knew God, this man. Can someone say amen? Hey? Hey? This is, this is the Lord's ministering to us today saying, hey, even if you're fleeing from a family member, <laughs> this was... This was the psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. He was fleeing from his own son. But he, the Lord, was uh, quick to remind us and is and, and was quick to remind David and quicken him, which is where the penning come from, which is why he penned this. And David was quick to know who was his best friend and it wasn't his son. It wasn't a family member here, was it? He went straight to the Lord. Psalm 3, verse 3. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one, he singles it out, doesn't he? The one who lifts up my head. No one else can do it. I'm telling you, when, you, when you're down in trouble and you need a helping hand, I tell you, Jesus, he's able to just lift you up. He, he's able to just pick you up like no one can. And as, as the very verse I chose, Psalm 3 verse 4, as a heading for the newsletter, I cried to you, Lord, with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. Look, there are people who may be very close. They may be very close to you. And they may even be next door neighbours, but I tell you, they can't hear your moaning and groaning. They can't hear your cry. You might think they can. It might be the husband or the wife and, and, and you might be thinking, why doesn't my husband understand my groaning? Why doesn't my wife understand? But this one, from his holy hill, I'm talking, I'm talking other planetary here. This is from another planet. This, if this is not a confidence builder and a Holy Ghost assurance builder and a day of encouragement, I don't know what is. Hey, this is a day of encouragement as the Spirit. This is other planetary stuff. This is not next door, you know, listening through the, the <coughs> hardy plank walls or whatever, <laughs> through the brick veneer. This is, this is another planet. This is one from another planet and he's on a hill and it's a holy hill he is far away but yet he's as near as his word is near this is the beauty of our God amen this is the power and the awe that strikes me this is how mighty our Lord is Psalm 3 you are a shield for me my glory you are and you are the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill. Oh, he's the glory and the lifter of my head. He's the glory and the lifter. He alone can do it. David knew that. He didn't cry out to his wife. He didn't cry out to another family member. He didn't cry out <coughs> to anyone else, did he? Or the soldiers that were under him. He cried out to the Lord with his voice. Amen. And he heard him. He has ears and he can hear. I tell you, that is a, a good prayer point, isn't it? That's a strong prayer point. Psalm 3 Verse 5, I lay down and sleep. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. 
I lay down and slept. I lay down and slept. You can't sleep without peace. You, unless the Lord allows you to slumber, you can't slumber. Unless the Lord allows it, you can't. And it says, even though David was in this position and he was being pursued by his own son and it wasn't a good look he cried out to the Lord and he said the Lord heard him the Lord gave him a nice night's sleep hey the Lord hears us clearly and precisely as we see in verse 4 when no human on earth can hear a thing. Hey? When no man or woman can hear one thing. You know, I gave up a long time ago when people tell me their problems and I say, yeah, I know, I, 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 I know this and I know that. I'm very quick to tell people, yes, I'm, I'm hearing you and I am listening diligently but you know what I really have to be honest and tell you I don't know what you're going through but I know someone that does <laughs> and he knows it better than you do his name is Jesus and he's on his holy hill and he's waiting for you to just call out to him so that he may give you a wonderful night's sleep Hey? He, that he may confirm to you like he did to David I have heard you and I am attending to the cry I am dealing with it can you say amen hey? isn't that wonderful which is found in, in verse 5 if we look at verse 5 I lay down and sleep I awoke for the Lord sustained me you see that if the Lord if the Lord's not there to sustain us you see the, the love of the Lord doesn't just as Paul said the love of the Lord constrains me but the love of the Lord doesn't just constrain us but it sustains us hey and, and, and we see the love of the Lord by giving he gives David rest here doesn't he he gives David rest. He attended to him. He didn't just hear him, but he attended to him. And it says in verse 5, I awoke. Well, when you wake up tomorrow morning, you'll know that the Lord has been gracious to you and you must be able to say, when you wake up tomorrow, I now know the love of God. He's allowed me to wake up. He's allowed me to wake up. He's given me another day. <laughs> and that, you know, the Lord knows how we like to sit down to a nice meal. You know what I mean? He sit down to a nice meal, a nice steak and fries with salad or, you know, garnish with maybe a bit of mustard sauce or something. And we sit down to a lovely meal and... <laughs> You know, and, and a nice cool drink, pomegranate juice, 100% of course. And, and you know, we finish off with sweets or something. And he's given us another day and another meal and, and another glimpse of the sun rising or another glimpse of, of a beautiful flower or animal or all things great and small sort of thing. You're listening. And, you know... This is a beautiful duplicity of God's power from a hearing from another, another planet and, and a family member's in hot pursuit of this man, his own dearly beloved son, Absalom. Hot pursuit, ready to slay him. <laughs> you know? love one another <laughs> sort of thing you know well David must have been doing the wrong thing for his son to do that 
you know, he wasn't thinking nice things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Verse 6, Psalm 3. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of peoples who have set themselves against me all around. So we don't have to bother about whether it's one or ten thousand. You know, this David used ten thousand, but there's only one pursuing him. <laughs> well, he might have had others with him, but it wouldn't have been ten thousand. But you see, David was saying, it doesn't matter if it's just my son wanting to kill me or whether it's 10,000. It doesn't matter. I have the undisputed champion with me. Can someone say amen? Don't put your hand up if you're enjoying yourself, please. Now, here we are. Verse 6. I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people who have set themselves against me all around... <coughs> 7. Arise, O Lord, save me. He's stating here, see, he knows that God's the Saviour. And all he has to do is, is arise for him. And we allow God to arise for us when we call upon his name. This was a righteous man speaking here. This was a man after God's own heart. Can someone say amen? Hey? Here he is calling the Lord Saviour. And he, he, he brings a double emphasis there on verse 8. Well, let's just finish off verse 7. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. Calls him God there. For you have struck my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken their teeth, the ones of the un uh, ungodly. Right? And then, finishing off, he says, you have broken the teeth. Verse 8, salvation belongs to the Lord. You're listening today. His blessing is upon his people and no one else. Now listen. Salvation belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to any man. It doesn't belong to any organisation. It doesn't belong, <coughs> doesn't belong to Mary. It doesn't belong to Buddha or Muhammad or Allah belongs to Yahweh. Can someone say amen? No, no one else. No one else can save. No one else. No one. Salvation belongs to our God. Hey? Now look, if this hasn't lifted your head, this hasn't blessed you and as you as you peruse the newsletter and go over the newsletter and you come down the bottom of the newsletter to the summary <coughs> I paraphrased Psalm 3 in summary I have said here on the newsletter we the doers of Mashiach's words have greater protection than the US Pentagon can offer we have a glory that is infinitely superior upon us a counsellor that is available 25-8 a listening ear that can hear you whisper from another planet we have one who is capable and available to grant you sweet sleep and slumber instantaneously we have one who is capable of sustaining us at all times in all circumstances. We have one who fights our battles for us, lames our enemies and knocks their teeth out, blesses us in all manners, then he saves us and preserves us for himself that, that we may live with him partaking of his eternal riches as joint heirs and in finite heirs listen for eternity that's not bad I mean that's a mouthful isn't it in summary and we're walking around with our hand in the dirt oh well you know I'm trying my best no 